please, uh, I would like to ask everyone to mute yourself. And uh, once we reach the Q&A session, you can unmute yourself and interact with us or with me in particular. Uh, if you have any questions, please. Thank you very much. All right, so starting with the Excel XLOOKUP function. Now, this is fairly a new function introduced by Microsoft Excel. And just to give you a brief, what is the XLOOKUP about? So it's a function in Excel that searches uh, a range or an array of for a specified value and returns the related value from another column. So it's like what we used to do in the VLOOKUP uh, or to... Uh, or the edge lookup, if you like, but it is by far more advanced than the X look than the V lookup or the edge lookup, and it has uh, so many features that we will be discussing today. It can look up both vertically and horizontally, and perform exact match, which is like the default setting, or an approximate match, or it can basically use a wild card, allowing us to perform a partial match. Now, unfortunately, this XLOOKUP, since it's like a fairly uh, a new addition to the lookup family, it's not available in all the Excel versions. It's available in basically two versions, the Microsoft 365, which is like the professional version, in addition to Excel version of 2021. So most organizations now are using uh, recent Excel versions. So I hope everyone here would be able to uh, practice and utilize the XLOOKUP. Now, XLOOKUP in reality, it is replacing the VLOOKUP, the HLOOKUP, and if you are using index and match as well, there is no need for these. All of them are now being replaced by the XLOOKUP. Okay, so I will be using this file to explain the XLOOKUP features. And as I said earlier, this file will be shared with you in a G drive at the end of our session today. Okay, so starting with a basic XLOOKUP, just for you to appreciate, understand what is the XLOOKUP about. Now, here on the left-hand side, I have like a table that has different products and different price for each of these products. Now, here on the right-hand side, I would like to uh, look up the price of the sugar product. Now, normally, if I would like to use a VLOOKUP, uh, the VLOOKUP wouldn't work here. The reason, in the VLOOKUP, when I select or basically define my search area, which is this one, Excel is going to search for the item I'm searching for in this search array, but only in the first column from the left-hand side. So in this situation, my item or the product I'm searching for is not falling on the left-hand side in the search area, but it's falling on the right-hand side or maybe in the middle. So for this reason, the X lookup or the H lookup wouldn't work. What do, what do I need to do? I need to rearrange the columns if I'm using a vertical lookup or rearrange the rows if I'm using a horizontal lookup in order for me to be able to look up the value using these traditional V or H lookup. Now, this hassle is no more there thanks to the X lookup. So coming here into the price, I'll start with equal x lookup the first argument that we need to define is the lookup value what is the item what is the value i'm searching for here i'm searching for the sugar which is basically in cell d2 then moving to the lookup array where you would like to search for this item i would like to search for it here in the products column comma where is the result where you would like to get the result back from. Now I need to get back my result from the prices column. This one, 
So basically closing the bracket here, clicking enter. Now, yes, the answer is $3. And it makes sense because the price of the sugar is yes, it is $3. Okay. So this is like a basic X lookup just to get you, you know, started understanding the rationale behind the X lookup. And as you see, it is so far, it is very like I would say a similar to a VLOOKUP, but now we'll see the different features of it and how powerful it is. Now, here we have done a basic vertical lookup. Let's see if my data is horizontally arranged. So a horizontal lookup would look like this. My data is basically in a, in a horizontal manner. The price is in one row and the products are in a different row. So I would like to search for the price of the chocolate chip. Here, I'm going to use the X lookup again, but in a horizontal manner. For the price equal X lookup. Now I'm searching for the chocolate chip. This is my lookup array. Sorry, this is my lookup value. My lookup array is this row where it has all my products comma, my return array is the price row, which is this one. Close the bracket, hit enter. We got $5, a price of a chocolate chip. Yes, it makes sense. And that is correct. So, so far we have seen a basic X lookup performing a vertical lookup as well as a horizontal lookup. Now, our third example is basically here I have a price table that has list of my products and list of their respective prices, but I would like to perform the lookup in a separate sheet, which is across sheets, this sheet. So here I have the product of chocolate chip. I would like to bring back the price of it. Where are the prices? They are in a different sheet called price table. So I'll start here equals X lookup the item I'm searching for, which is the lookup value, this one, the chocolate chip, comma, where I would like to search for it. Now I need to move to the second sheet, that is the price table sheet, selecting the products list. Next, I need to define my return array values, which are basically the prices. I'm done. Close the bracket, enter. The chocolate chip price is $5. Is this correct? Yeah, here you go. All right, now moving into combining functions. All right, what do we mean by combining functions? In this sheet, I have my products, as well as for each product, what is the selling price for each? What is the cost for each? Assume I'm a retailer, basically I'm buying these products for these values, the cost, and I'm selling them on a retail basis for the prices. What I'd like to do here, I would like to know how much profit I will be earning by selling each of these products. In particular, I'm looking for the white chocolate product. So logically speaking, the profit is the price per unit less the cost per unit. So for this one, I need to sum these two, but using the sum combined with a, an X lookup. So that will be a sum plus a X lookup. All right, let's see how this works. I'll start here. Of course, I need to start with the sum equals sum. Now, what I would like to sum here, it will sum the result of the X lookup. So starting now with the X lookup, what do I want to search for? I would like to search for the product, which is the white chocolate, where here in the product list, comma, where to get the result from. I would like to get the result from the price and the cost. 
close the bracket of the X lookup and close the bracket of the sum. So what will happen in, the, in this formula basically? Excel is going to search for the white chocolate here in this column and it will be found here in row number seven. Now my return array or the results, I instead of selecting one column, I selected two columns. So logically speaking, Excel is going to return both the $6, the price per unit, as well as the 2.75 cents, that is the cost. These two will be returned and thanks to the sum function, it's going to sum them up and the result is $325 of profit which is basically the sum of these two. And the result is by selling one unit of white chocolate, I'll be making a profit of $3.25. All right. How can we do multiple lookups? All right. Uh, let me go back one step here for the return array. Now, in the return array, it's a bit similar to the combining functions, but instead of retrieving back the profit, I would like to bring back two things. For the particular product that I will decide on, I need to see the price or and the cost of that particular product. Now, in this scenario or this example, I have selected this product, which is basically the snickerdoodle. Now, the price is the $4 and the cost is one and a half dollars. Now, here, probably you will see something a bit strange. Uh, I'm only inserting the formula here under the price cell. So, equals X lookup. I'm searching for this product, comma, in the products array, comma. Now, what result I would like to bring back? It's not only selecting the price. I want, I'm selecting the price and the cost at the same time. Close the bracket, enter. So even though I have inserted the formula only under the price column, I got automatically the result for the price as well as the cost for this particular item. As you realize here, the reason, because in the result array, I did not select only one column, which is the price. I selected both columns, the price and the cost. And this is the reason I got both together, the price and the cost for this particular product. And this explains now what we have done here for the profit. When I selected the result from these two, Excel is going to return the price and the cost for the white chocolate. And thanks to the sum function, then it's going to sum up the $6 along with the cost of 2.75 cents for the white chocolate. Okay. Now, moving into the multiple lookups example. In this example, I have my regular products, but I have an additional column that is telling me what is the type of this product. I have two types. I have a classic products and I have some new products. And now I would like to look up based on a combination of criteria, what based on a product, as well as based on the type, okay? So I, I'm asking Excel, let me know what is the price of this product that whenever it's meeting this type. So the formula here will be as follows. Equal X lookup, I open a bracket. Now, what I'm searching for exactly, I'm not only searching for the oatmeal raisin, or I'm not only searching for the classic, but basically I'm searching for both together when this product meets this type. So I need to start with the product, then combine it using the and sign with this one. So Excel now understands that search 
for the oatmeal raisin when it is along with the classic. Comma, where I would like to search for this, I need to select the products array, combine it with the AND sign with the type. Comma, now where is the result? The result needs to be brought back from the price column. Close the bracket, enter. We got the $5. Is the $5 accurate? Here you go. When the oatmeal raisin is with the classic, it's a $5 product. And we can see here, it's the $5 product. Okay, now, for example, if I change this classic and instead I selected new. Now, I got NA. And if you are a user of the lookup functions, the VLOOKUP or HLOOKUP, you are quite familiar with the NA. This is the natural result when the lookup is basically not able to find the item that we are searching for, we are getting automatically an NA. Now, in using VLOOKUP or HLOOKUP, if I don't want to see the NA, I have two options. Either I am going to use the if, if error function or the if NA function that these two will basically uh, precede the VLOOKUP or HLOOKUP in order to replace the error with anything that we like. Now, thankfully, for the XLOOKUP, I don't need this hassle anymore because this error logic is already built in the XLOOKUP. Where is it built in? Let me go back here to my XLOOKUP function. Now, after deciding on the return array, you can find that there are three more arguments. If not found, match mode and search mode. These three arguments, you can see they are between brackets. Any arguments that are between brackets, and normally they are coming at the end of the function or the formula itself, these are optional arguments. So whether you define them, or no, basically Excel is going to, or that particular XLOOKUP function is going to function without any issues. Now here, I would like to use this amazing feature, if not found, comma, if the item I'm searching for using XLOOKUP, which is a combination of these two, is not found in my data, what should we get? Simply a message, which is a double quote, product, does not exist. Double quote, close the bracket of the XLOOKUP, enter. So here you go. So whenever I'm searching for something that doesn't exist, this automatically will come because this is like an error message that we have defined for this particular XLOOKUP. Going again, I have here a new that is cor corresponding with the chocolate chip. If I copy chocolate chip, paste it here. Now chocolate chip with the new is the $6. And yes, it is the $6. All right, excellent. Now moving to the matching mode. Uh, the nice thing also about the XLOOKUP, it took the VLOOKUP and the HLOOKUP one step further in relation to the matching mode. Normally in, uh, basically this feature wasn't available at all in the X, in the V or the H lookup. Here, for example, I'll give you an example. Uh, I have a customer who has a budget of $5.5 and basically is uh, asking what is like the maximum product value that he or she can afford buying. 
So in this situation, basically the 5.5 can maximum afford buying the oatmeal raisin. Now, how can we get this thing? Okay, I'm going to specify using the match mode, which is again, it's falling at the end of the X lookup function. And this is one of the optional arguments. Now, if this is put to zero, it means it's going to give me an exact match. And if it's the item is not found, as we have seen earlier, NA is going to be shown or returned. If I selected negative one, it's going to do an exact match. But if the item I'm searching for is not found, it is going to return the next smaller item. I have an option to do the opposite. If I select one as a match mode, it is going to do an exact match. If the item is not found, it will give me the next larger item. And also this would allow me to use a wild card match, means an approximate match using, for example, the asterisk. Now, in this scenario, equal X lookup. All right. I'm going to search for the budget that my customer has to spend, which is the D2, $5.5, where in the price range, comma, I want to bring back the product from the product range. Now, comma, do I need anything here for the error message? No. So I just put comma and I skip. Now I move to the match mode. I want to select negative one, which means that if there is nothing for $5.5, give me the one that is smaller to this value. So it doesn't make sense that if the guy has only 5.5, and if there is no product for 5.5, that guy can uh, basically, um, I would say, like can buy the, the one that is more, can afford the $6. Obviously not. They can afford the one that is a little bit cheaper, which is the 5.45 cents. So for this sake, I need to select minus one, match, exact match, or the next smaller item. Here I'm done. I can close the x lookup bracket enter the result is the oatmeal raisin so if i change the customer budget to be five dollar only the result is the chocolate chip if i make it four dollars and 95 cents then maximum they can afford the four dollar the four dollars basically uh, product which is this one okay now moving to the search mode this is similar to uh, the vlookup but also it's taken one step in advance now the this search mode basically it allows me normally the vlookup it starts searching from top to bottom so if the item is repeated multiple times, for example, here I'm searching for Mark, I can realize that Mark has three transactions. Immediately VLOOKUP will select the first one and will give me the date for that particular transaction. Thanks to the XLOOKUP, now I have a new feature. Depending on the mode, if I put a mode of one, it will search, start searching from top to bottom. And it will give me the first item. It is matching my criteria. If I select negative one, it will perform a reverse search. Means starting from bottom, top. In this situation, it will find this transaction first. And it will give me back this date rather than the first transaction date. Now, my question I want to answer, when was the last order done by Mark? So these are the orders we received during year 2022. Mark has placed three orders, one in Jan, the other in June, and the last was in July. The question, when was the last order done by Mark? So equal X lookup. 
I am searching for Mark in my customers array, comma. I want to bring back the order date for Mark. So my return array is the order dates, comma. Do I need to put any error message? No. Do I need to specify a match? Not necessary. I can either do an exact match or just leave it empty and Excel will give me by default an exact match. Now it's about the search mode. If I, if I leave it blank or empty, by default, Excel will do top bottom and I will not get the last order. For this sake, I need to take the minus one, which is searching last to first, close the bracket, click enter, and the result is 13th of July, which is this one, the last order done by Mark. Now, our last example today is a really fascinating one. This is what we call a nested lookup or X lookup. All right, so I have this table that has my products and these products, we have started dealing with them since 2019, 2021. And these are the revenues that we achieved by selling these products. Now in the top part, based on the product criteria that I select and the year criteria that I select, here I would like to get the revenue for this particular product in this particular year. So as you see, this is more like of a matrix. Now, this will be achieved as follows. Let me just simplify it for you. If I come here and I do the following formula, equal X lookup, all right. I would like to search for year 2020, which is the year here in my search criteria, comma, where in my years row and bring back the revenues for these particular years. Now, the result is an array, as you realize here. Let me just fix the format for the first one. Yeah, I got all revenues for 2020, as you see. These items are exactly as the ones here. So the, the reason, because I just asked Excel, find 2020 here, and since I selected all of this as an answer array, I got all the revenues under 2020. Now, to be particular here, I want the revenues of 2020, but for this particular product, which is the sugar. So how we are going to achieve this? Formula will be the following. Equals X lookup. Now I start searching for the product. So search please for the sugar, comma, where here in the products array. All right, comma. Now, where to get the result from? Now, this is a bit confusing because here, the result should come from 2020. But how would Excel know it's 2020? Because I have the years here in multiple columns. Here, I'm going to use the nested X lookup, which, is me, which means using more than X lookup in the same formula. So in the return array, I'm going to start my second X lookup. So X lookup, now search for the year where in the year's row, comma, once it's found, bring back the revenues for these par or this particular year, close the bracket for the second X lookup and close the bracket for the first X lookup hit enter just a sec i think 
All right, so, okay. So if not found match, okay, it needs to be exact. And the search mode, that's fine. No, there's something here. So, So I'm searching for the sugar. Let me do it again. So, yeah, search for the sugar here in the lookup array. Okay. Comma, the return array is X lookup. Now search for year 2020. In these years, comma, and these are the values. Here we go. So let me show you the formula. I'll just put the formula here on top. Equal formula text. Show me the formula here. So whenever I have the sugar for year 2020, the, the required result is... 7,192,194, and it is exactly matching this one. And I was able to retrieve the revenue having two criteria using two X lookups. The first one is to identify basically that I need the sugar from this product. So just basically to define this row. And the second one, I was searching for 2020 in this row and accordingly to give me the, the revenue of 2020. So with this, I got the answer of $7,192,194. All right. Uh, with this, I conclude my uh, webinar for the XLOOKUP. Uh, please, uh, if you have any questions, please, you are more than welcome to ask. Thank you, Basil. Thank you very much. It's really my pleasure. Uh, if anybody has joined late, again, uh, this webinar is recorded and is going to be published very uh, soon on our website, uh, merck.com. Uh, the last thing from my part, I'm going to share with you here in the chat box, a, a link to the Google Drive, where basically you can find uh, this file, so you can see the examples, you can practice them. And uh, I hope everyone would be able to utilize this amazing function of Excel. So here you go, everyone. In the chat box, I have shared with you the link for the uh, Google Drive. Please copy this link, access the drive, and you will find uh, both the uh, Excel file as well as the PowerPoints that I have used for this webinar. Uh, thank you very much for your attendance and uh, looking forward to seeing you in our future webinars. Merck.com